Hey family, it's Dr. Johnson and welcome to Wine Therapy's Wine Tour. Today we are here at our second stop at Sable Gates Winery, located in Midtown, Houston, Texas. We had the pleasure of learning so much about this winery as well as the wines that they produce. I hope that you have your wine glasses and you're ready for the show. Hey family, it's Dr. Johnson and happy Wine Therapy Wednesday. Today we are Midtown Houston, Texas here at Sable Gates Winery. I'm excited because we got a tour going on today. We're going to do some wine tasting and learn a little history about Sable Gates Winery and the owner and how she came about with this winery. So I'm excited. Hope you're excited. And let's see if we're going to learn new today, all right? pleasure of being welcomed into the winery by Miss Sylvia who is the co-owner of Sable Gates Winery. Me being here today was an absolute pleasure and she taught me a lot when it came to the wine tasting and different wines that they produce here at the winery. Right. So this is your favorite table? Yes, because <laughs> it's close to the bar and I can see it. Oh, you can see everything. Yeah. So, um, are you here every day? Uh, Tuesday to Saturday. Wow. Or if we had special events, we had a wedding here on a Wednesday. Oh, a wedding. A wedding day. On a Monday. Oh my God. That's nice So you do weddings here at your wedding? We do. Any of these to drink wine. <laughs> you know, we don't have to drink wine. Well, you know what? I need to be here more often with you. I like that. <laughs> All right. So this is Miss Sylvia. She is the owner of Sable Gates Winery. Hi, Sylvia. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to of Sable Gates Winery. And we're going to just talk a little bit about Sable Gates. Um, just get some history, uh, some knowledge about wine, and just enjoy the atmosphere here. It's really, really nice. I enjoy it. And it's, I love the, the barrels. I love all of this. So we're going to see some of that later. Yeah. All right. So, Miss Sylvia, um, tell me a little history about Sable Gates. Um, Sable Gates Winery's history started probably 1940s mm -hmm. in Hungary. Okay. My maternal grandparents were grape growers and winemakers. Right. They had a vineyard on the side of a hill, and they grew white grapes, Riesling, mm -hmm. and they made really, really, really dry Riesling wine. Oh and that's how I grew up. My parents, mm -hmm. my mom inherited the vineyard, mm -hmm. and then my dad and my mom were operating it. My, my dad was a, a brick mason, a master brick mason. Uh, my mom was a housewife, but they had the, the vineyard and they had a farm as well. So that oh. was what my mom was taking care of, besides raising three girls. So, oh, wow. Yeah, I had a so, lot going on. <laughs> so I, I grew up on the vineyard. Um, we've done everything by hand. Uh, we had no machines. We had only two pieces of equipment. Mm -hmm. One is a crusher. Mm -hmm. It's a machine that you pour the grapes in and there's someone turning the wheels and crushing the grapes. And then a person, usually a man, scooped the, the juice and the liquid into a press. Oh, wow. Okay. So those were the two equipment that we used. And then from the press, it started the fermentation and it went in, in the old barrels. Oh, wow. And That's the side of a hill underground. Underground? Underground. Oh, wow. So you actually know how to make wine. I, I do know how to make wine, yes. You are the first person who has a winery that I meet that knows how to make wine. The first person I met, especially with the tour, this is awesome. We actually know someone who knows how to make wine. Yeah. So I really think that's really, really awesome, especially if that you sell it. So that's awesome. I do not make it though. You don't um, make it? Here. I don't make it. I run I run the business. I'm responsible for, for front of house, back of house, everything that's at, after the wine is made. Uh, my husband is the winemaker, um, and he makes all the wines um, right here. All those tanks that you see over there, they're all full of wine. Oh my so God, and your husband, husband makes the wine. Oh, wow. That's very interesting. So this is a, a teamwork effort that you and him have going on here. It's family. Oh, family. You said this when you came. This is your house. This is like your family. This is my house. Yeah. I like that. Now, how long has um, Sable Winery been here? We are a little over four years old. Uh, we celebrated um, in November. Um, unfortunately, we were shut down for six months during mm -hmm. COVID uh, because of the 51% rule unfortunately affected us. Yeah. So, but we, we are four years old now. All right, so how did you manage the stress of actually the business, especially when it shut down in COVID? How did you and your husband deal with it? Um, 
Well, in the beginning, you know, starting a business is extremely stressful, especially that there's no large corporation behind us. It's it's only our savings are, are everything that we have basically. So it is it was really stressful. However, we love wine and we wanted to give that love to people mm -hmm. and give something else to them. You know, when when it's about wine, wine is not only it's, wine is not about drinking. You know, wine okay. is. It's a, it's a whole experience and that's what, that's what we wanted. So when we started the business, it was stressful because new business, you know, you worry about financials all the time. You, 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 you count your pennies, mm -hmm. you're very careful. And then um, we, start, we, start, we saw an interest, um, you know, we have a wine club membership. Okay. That is quite popular. Our wine club members become friends, mm -hmm. um, become family members. They love us. They come all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, there was different kind of stress. The financial stress kind of went away. Okay. And then there was the stress of customer service. You okay. Know, stress mm -hmm. of bad reviews. We, we do have hundreds of five-star reviews. But every once in a while, there is a one-star mm -hmm. review. Every once in a while, there's a person that we cannot please. Yes. And that, that stress. I'm, um, I've been in hospitality since my first job. I was 12 years old. Oh, yeah. and <laughs> yes, in Hungary, that's legal. Um, and I always wanted to make people happy. Even when I had a professional career, I was your HR manager. Okay. Um, I'm a, I wanted to make people happy, however, the policies were not my policies, you know. The corporation behind me, I, I'm the enforcer, I'm the police officer. Mm -hmm. And I was not a... I wanted to make people happy. I'm a yeah, nice person. Every, as an HR manager, someone knocks on your door, um, there's a complaint, someone's not doing their job, someone quit. It is extremely stressful. Right now, that door you walk through, that's my <laughs> office door. And every time someone comes through, yeah. look at your face, you're smiling. I am. Because you know, <laughs> we're going to have some wine. I am. I'm super excited about this wine tasting today. Some wine to taste. So we can have a conversation yes. about the wine theory. Now, and I want to say that's what wine theory is about. Uh, is about. We actually talk yeah. about topics and different things that we deal with day-to-day -day life over a glass of wine. And like you said, if you wanted to have a conversation over wine, and that's what we do. And that's why we want to kind of do this wine tour to kind of talk about how important it is. So, um, I know you said you and your husband, this is your business, and that you love to make people happy. This is your mm -hmm. home, this is your family. You've dealt with um, you know, the ups and downs and stress after stress. So how do you actually cope when you have those bad days? What do you do to relax? What do you do to, to uplift yourself? Because sometimes having a business can be, as you said, stressful. So what do you do? I run. Oh, exercise. <laughs> yeah, exercise, yes. Exercise. I, 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 I always love exercising. I, I'm not a very athletic build, mm -hmm. but I am extremely stubborn. Mm -hmm. And I found that running is an outlet that when I don't have to talk with people, I can just have my thoughts mm -hmm. in my head and put them in order and it gives me a clarity that monotonous, those steps, you know, over miles and miles that kind of gives me a, that something that I can't find because it's, it's always loud around me. There's yeah. always people talking, always something happening, the music, the cars, my guests asking questions. Um, I have to buy cheeses, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I have yeah. to decide what sort of wine we're making. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that the couple hours every day that, that running is. That's a good thing. It's good you have that outlet running. And yeah. then you have a partner, your husband. And how do you all support each other? Like, what is your go to for each other? What do you do? We love sitting down with a glass of wine. You know, that's the, the easiest thing to do. Bar. Yes. This is this is that's that's my philosophy. Like I have two. I have a philosophy about wine that has actually two parts to it. Okay. Um, one is um, having a glass of wine is not a bad drink. Mm -hmm. It's not like a shot. You take a shot. Right. You're not right. drinking wine to feel it you're not mm -hmm. you don't want it's not the alcohol is not the, the, the purpose yeah and then you so that you, you're going to decide the purpose mm -hmm. and and why the alcohol is not the purpose the purpose is you and me getting to know each other yeah. or talking about something holding something in our hands 
It's not like in the South, so it's really good. It does. It's been teasing it's me. Really, really good. Yeah. So, just um, an accessory. Some people use drugs. Yeah. Some people use food. Um, some people read books. Mm -hmm. But we are so quickly dismiss each other. You know, it's. It's everything happens so fast. It's very easy to not talk to each other. Yeah. So when you sit down and you take your time to purposely look into each other's eyes mm -hmm. and say, hey, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's easier if you have something in your hand that's not good and, and if you, it tastes good, good. good. And, mm -hmm. and if it's, you know, it kind of relaxes you. Exactly. It's mm -hmm. um, but it's still, you know. And I this like what healthy. you said. Yeah, you said this is an accessory, and I like that. And I think that's a new thing that we can use as far as wine. This is our accessory when we're having conversations. And then, what is the purpose we're using it for? We're not using it to feel it. We use it to have conversation and make it just fine. The other part of my philosophy is, and I hope you will agree with me, because most of my guests agree, there's no bad wine. No. It's, it's, it's the wrong wine giving to the wrong palate mm -hmm. at the wrong time. And I'm going to bring up a, a, an example. Oh. When, you, when we were in college, what did we drink? Mm -hmm. Speed box mm -hmm. wine. Exactly. Was it not perfect? It was at the time. It was absolutely, <laughs> it, was. it fit our budget. Mm -hmm. And it needed to do what, it did what it was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And we really enjoyed it. The yeah. taste, everything. Now, 15, 20 years later, that wine is still the perfect wine for someone else. Yes. Mm -hmm. But not for me. Right. Not, not for you. Yeah, exactly. That's why there's no bad wine. It's mm -hmm. just the palate, the time. It has to be the time, it has to be right. I agree with that. That's it. my other philosophy about wine. I have a lot of guests coming in here, and um, they say they have a particular taste, but they want to drink a certain type of wine, certain variety, or maybe a cab or a Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. And I love to open people's eyes mm -hmm. how different wine can be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love to challenge them. So if you come in here and you say you only drink Pinot Noir, mm -hmm. you will get everything else but Pinot Noir. <laughs> no, so I'm I'm just, think, I feel I'm like kidding. you're gonna I feel like you're gonna do that with me. I love red wine, actually dry. But mm -hmm. I feel like today you're gonna teach me something new and you're gonna give you gonna open my eyes with another wine today. I really feel like that. Uh, we're going to taste three wines today. Okay. And the last wine will push your palate. Yes. Okay, I'm excited. This is exciting. So I'm excited. Thank you for the interview. Now I'm ready to learn from you now. So okay. let's get the wine tasting started. <laughs> now at this point, I'm super nervous because I don't know what she has in store for me. All I know is that I love red wine and I love my wine dry. But she has some mystery wines for me, so I'm excited about tasting them, and I'm open to it. So let's see. All right, guys, so we're getting ready to do our wine tasting here at Stable Gates Winery. I'm excited because Miss Sylvia is about to teach us a whole lot about wines, which we need to know. So when we have our next wine therapy show, we're ready to go. So Miss, Miss Sylvia, you take it away. All right, so we are going to taste three wines today. Okay. Usually our wine tastings are five or seven different wines, um, but I would like to use only three to teach you. The first two are going to be probably familiar, okay. and the third one is going to be a little... Yeah, you're no going to surprise push your today. <laughs> you're going to push your pad a little bit, yes. Okay. So uh, we're going to start with a, a Texas wine. Okay. Um, I know um, many of my guests are um, not too familiar with Texas. My Texas has a very young uh, wine history, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we teamed up with a, a vineyard, uh, Bending Branch Winery, mm -hmm. in uh, close to Fredericksburg, in Comfort, Texas. And um, Dr. Bob, their winemaker, provided us with Tanat grapes. Uh, the most important thing about Tanat is that it is the the healthiest red wine. Oh, okay. You know, red wines have antioxidants yes, in them. That's I why do. the doctors say mm -hmm. you can have a glass of red wine every day. Now, yeah. what they don't say is that you can have one glass of dry red wine, mm -hmm. not the sweet. Okay. 
Um, red wines have antioxidants that kind of essentially keeping you a little healthier. Mm -hmm. But if you want to pick the best out of all the red wines, Tanat has five times the antioxidants right, now. as any other red wine. So we're we're looking out for our hearts a little bit. Yeah, thank you. So this is a Texas Tanat, mm -hmm. um, 2020 harvest. Um, I think it's gonna be up in your alley, dry, fruity. It's gonna make you snack your lips. Mm -hmm. It's gonna make your mouth feel dry on the inside. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, a regular wine tasting. We always start with assessing the color of the wine. Okay. Um, we hold the glass at a 45 degree angle, mm -hmm. preferably in front of a white background, but it's kind of dark right now, so we yeah. can't do that, to look at the color. Now this wine is hard to see now because it's dark. This wine is dark red mm -hmm. with a slightly bit of purple. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, assessing the color helps us sommeliers decide what my what wine we might be drinking because most a lot of times we don't know what we're drinking right we mm -hmm. do wine tasting now second step is that we need to smell the wine okay now we have to swirl the glass okay and I, I, I just want to say i picked it up wrong <laughs> oh the wine glass yes i did so uh the wine glasses have stems that's where we have to hold them mm -hmm. uh, for two reasons one is our fingers are very warm and if we hold the wine glass by the bowl, this is called the bowl, mm -hmm. we'll warm up the wine. Oh, so this wine is room temperature, 70 degrees right now. Our fingers are over 80 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So oh. if this amount of wine, we hold it for a minute, it's going to become lukewarm. And that's not oh, ideal. Wow. Okay. Two, uh, no matter how clean our hands are, we always have fingerprint oils. Mm -hmm. We leave fingerprints. So when we go to assess the color of the wine, we'll see gray. Right. on the crystal glass mm -hmm. and if it's a white wine that gray fingerprint could throw you throw us off completely mm -hmm. uh, to okay. decide what color the wine is for red wine it's not that important because fingerprints are not very pretty right so we hold it by the by the stem okay let's go swirl it if it's too difficult swirl it on the oh. table all right and while the wine is still moving we're gonna smell it Oh, it smells so good. So don't when be shy. still moving, while, yes. while it's still moving, okay. yes. Uh, don't be shy. Stick your nose all the way <laughs> in, it, in the ground. Oh, if you so smell, good. if you smell from a distance, mm. you're gonna smell really faint. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Actually, how strong the the smell is, mm. it's one other characteristic of the wine. But you, I like to smell it with my okay. nose all the way, and it's my glass, so right. it's yours. Nobody else can have it. And it, it needs to be still moving, so I like that. Yeah. This, this wine is quite fruity, but the fruits are not sweet at all. There, I can smell maybe red currants mm -hmm. or blueberries, but they're super tart, not ripe okay. at all. Okay. So when you decide fruitiness, uh, you also have to decide the characteristics of the fruit and what state the fruit is in. Mm -hmm. Think about. Um, a strawberry. You go to the grocery store and you see this box of beautiful strawberries. Mm -hmm. You take it, you taste it, it's tart. Yeah. You leave it on your countertop for three days and they turn into these, these juicy, sweet strawberries, oh. right? Okay. Now think of that okay. unripe strawberry and the ripe strawberry, the taste difference. They're both strawberries, they taste like strawberry, but yeah. this is tart strawberry and that's ripe strawberry. Now that's the food characteristic. Oh. Unripe, ripe, uh, bruised, stewed, whatever, Okay. right? So that's what we're smelling, unripe fruit. Mm -hmm. So we'll assume that this wine is dry because we're smelling all, all, all the tartness. You want to okay. go, you want to yep. taste it? <laughs> it's good, really good. And I told you I love dry red wine. It was really good. So I'm smacking my lips, this is this is one of my favorite wines, high acid. When you, when you, when the wine makes you salivate, makes you release a lot of saliva, yeah. mm -hmm. that means there's a lot of acid in the wine. Is that a good high thing? High acid, acidic wine. A lot of uh, wine characteristic is high, high acidity. It doesn't make it a good wine or a bad wine, it's just a characteristic of, of, okay. the, of the grape. Okay, gotcha. All right. Now, it did not dry my, my, the inside of my mouth. Did you swish? 
I didn't switch. I didn't switch. Wait, you don't have to. <laughs> but we're doing a white testing. So we're, okay, so we're just going to have a little so, bit of I'll show you. So, so if we can go back to the purpose of the drinking, right? If we are friends, we are sitting um, at, at my uh, on my couch and we're having a conversation, you're obviously not going to swirl and mm -hmm. smell and swish and right. all the stuff because that's not the point. Right. The point is that we enjoy each other and we just sit. Now we are doing a wine tasting. I'm teaching you about wine. I'm teaching you about how to hold the wine glass. Um, part of wine tasting is the smelling, the swirling, the swishing. Okay. So again, we, we went back to the purpose of the drink. Mm -hmm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you okay. how I taste wine. Everybody has their own technique. Um, you have to want to maximize the flavor in your mouth. So how you can do it. First is um, swishing. So you engage all the taste buds that are in your mouth, on your tongue, all the mucous membrane on the inside of your, of your mouth, the gum, everything. Um, you have to incorporate air. Um, those receptors that are in your nose, they are also in your mouth, past the soft palate, all the way in the back. Mm -hmm. So if you incorporate air in your mouth, you can actually smell inside your mouth. And that will enhance all the flavors. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how I taste. Okay. So always start with smell because smelling is a sense, right? So I'm gonna smell first, and I'm gonna take a sip. I'm gonna let the wine fall to the bottom of my mouth. I'm gonna open my mouth. Actually, no. I'm sorry. Okay. Take a, take a sip. I'm gonna swish. Mm -hmm. And then let the wine uh, fall to the bottom of the mouth, inhale over the wine, then I'm gonna swish again, and then swallow. So that's okay. how I do it. Okay. 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 I'm gonna show you. It's gonna it's gonna be a process. I'll okay. show you. Taste it all the way from here, all the way oh. to here. Okay. That's how you can say all those words that sommeliers use. Mm -hmm. Earthy, mushroomy, oh. barnyard, licorice, leather, cedar, cigar box. You know all those, yeah. all those fancy okay. words. Mm -hmm. That's how you can taste them. If you just take a sip and swallow, yeah. you know that. Is licorice. Mm -hmm. It's gonna taste maybe fruitiness and alcohol. Yeah. But when you engage everything, that's when you can find those. We call them notes. No. Okay. That barely present. A lot of people don't believe they present. Mm -hmm. Like how can a a red wine smell like asparagus? Uh, Christian, my colleague and I, we were at a wine tasting last week, mm -hmm. and one wine tasted like asparagus. Wow. We both agreed. Mm. That's different. Very. Yeah. It was pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> I like no. steak with my asparagus, yeah, not wine. Exactly. So, um, so, so that's how I do. I do tasting. Um, everybody has their own own technique, but um, the point is that you try to engage as much senses as you can, and, and if you're just sipping, you engage only the, the tip of your tongue. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, that's something new I learned today. So I got that. I like that actually. It, I did taste a whole lot of more flavor yes. when I did the switch. So I can say it's very, um, it's beneficial, I think. So I like that. Very right. good. I think we're, we're ready for our next wine. Okay. Um, this is... Um, so this was Tanat. This was a Texas Tanat. Texas Tanat. It okay. does not have a, a fancy full name. Okay. Uh, we just call it what it is, Texas Tanat. Our next wine is called Big Daddy. Oh, Jesus. Is that your name, Steve? <laughs> he wants to be called Big Daddy so bad. All right. Uh, Big Daddy is our best-selling red wine. Okay. It is going to be very different than the Best-selling. This, this best is a best-selling red wine, yes. This is yours, right? This is, is this the Right. So oh, the Texas right. Tanette is yours, too. You make that? And we you buy the grapes all yeah. over the world and we make the wine here. Okay. What matters is where the grapes are from because oh, okay. you want the you want the Tuscan sun. Mm -hmm. You want the the cold winters of Argentina, mm -hmm. the highlands. You want um, wow. you want the dirt in Sonoma. You want the rain from the Atlantic Valley, Oregon. You know. 
so wow. that the climates different climates yeah. make the grape taste different. So yeah. what matters is where the grapes were grown and harvested. The wine is wine making is a controlled process. It's mm -hmm. it's it's barrels and tanks and yeah. pipes and and motors. It's an, an AC, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter where it's made. It's still a French wine. It's still an Australian wine. Okay. Okay. Because that's where the grapes are from. Gotcha. Okay. So the first wine was Texas. Yep. This is California. Napa. California. Yes. Well, so it is. So it is. It is warm. Um, warm weather makes the fruits taste sweeter. Okay. So remember, Tanet was on that strawberries. Mm -hmm. Everything was tart about yeah. it. Now smell this. This smells okay. like GM. Okay. So so uh, pick it up. We're not going to look at the color now because it's dark. We can't really see. But this is actually a red. Oh, okay. okay it's red. red. There's no purples, blues, or pinks, or brown. Oh, okay. This is a red wine. Okay. Oh, you can tell it's sweet. I mean, a little sweet. I can smell it. The it's wine is dry. Is it? But it smells so sweet. Because the fruit notes mm, are okay. super ripe. Oh, it smells so sweet. Blueberries, blackberries, cherries. They're Easy. so ripe. My grandma's cooking jam out of it. It's like when when you enter a kitchen and the sweet jam is bubbling on the stove. That's how this wine smells like. Mmm, it smells so good. Oh, it smells. I want to so show you another trick. Okay. You open? Yeah. You're a doctor. You know we have two <laughs> sides of it, right? Yeah. And you know they have different functions. Mm -hmm. The left side is a little more creative than the right side, mm -hmm. right? So if you think, if, if you, and you have two nose nostrils, yeah. so if you block one side and block the other, you should smell different things. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Right. For real, you're going to smell different things. Okay. This I'm going to do my left side, my uh, right side first. Different, very different. Very I, different. I never uh, noticed that. So now you know three ways of smelling the wine. Yes, actually, I'm gonna teach you a fourth one. Okay, you have only one nose, four ways of smelling. I know. Remember, I told you I like sticking my nose in it, mm -hmm. uh, so you can smell it down here and you stick your nose in it, or you smell it up here. Here, oh. you smell more alcohol, you're closer. Here, it's more the floralness and the, the fruitiness. Oh, wow, because it's less alcohol, right. more, more of the actual fruitiness of the wine. Okay. So okay. there's one nose, four ways of smelling wine. I know, four ways. Four ways of smelling wine. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. Up here. And you're only further by two inches. Mm -hmm. And then the left and the right nostril. You smell it. I love that. Yeah. All right. right. So this is very fruity on the nose and the fruits are yeah. very sweet on the nose. So mm -hmm. all my guests expect this wine to be sweet, but it's actually a dry wine. One of our highest alcohol content because um, uh, it, it's been fermented all the way down to zero sugar. So it's high mm -hmm. alcohol, no sugar. Oh, okay. All right. And then I need a squish, right? Oh, absolutely. All right. Blackberries, not as acidic. It does not make me snack. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say that it's lower in yeah. acid, and it does not dry the inside of my mouth. So the tannins are friendly too. Oh, it's warm. <laughs> you know why is that? <laughs> why? Can you I never, it? I never knew why it was warm. Never knew. So one way of the there's two kind of warmth that you can feel in your chest. When you sip wine and you open your, after you sipped it and you open your mouth and you exhale through your mouth and you feel like you you blow on flame mm -hmm. like a, a dragon, that's alcohol. Okay. So if you feel there's flames coming out of your mouth, oh, wow. that means higher alcohol possibly. Mm -hmm. It's not an exact science. Mm -hmm. Or this warmth here that is um, from the Hungarian oak. This wine had two kinds of oak in it. American oak and Hungarian oak. Different oak gives different flavor to wine. American oak gives this particular wine, vanilla, the maple syrup, yeah. smoky bacon. Mm -hmm. And the Hungarian oak gives that warmth, that little 
tiny spice maybe in your chest. That you always, you always feel it in, in your chest. Okay. Okay. Mm. I would have thought this was sweet if you didn't tell me any better. Literally, it smells so, so sweet. All of our red wines are no sugar. A winemaker prefers alcohol over sugar, so if you see a wine under the red wine menu, they all know sugar and all higher alcohol. Most of our wines are keto. Mm. Um, the keto threshold oh, okay. is 7 grams of sugar or 7% sugar. 13 and a half percent alcohol. Now this wine is over 13.5 alcohol. That's why it's not a keto wine. Okay. But most of our wines are keto wines. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, okay. this even oh, I'm just thinking that even even my moscatos are keto. Really? Okay. Because so if, and when you say keto, do you mean like the low carbohydrate? So if you're on a keto diet, you can drink. You this. can drink. Wow. All, all, almost all of my wine. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you just have to because all of our sugar is our our sweetest wine, um, which is not a dessert wine, is only three and a half percent sugar, and that's way below seven percent. That's the rule for keto. Mm -hmm. So all of our red wines, white wines, and sangrias are keto in terms of sugar content. In terms of alcohol, mm -hmm. uh, there's a bunch of reds that are not because they're too high alcohol. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, our dessert wines are too too sugary, too sweet. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So dessert wines, like, it's just me asking for my viewers and myself, dessert wines should be sweet? Always. Always sweet. And you make more keto wines. So whenever I'm on a keto diet, I can come and drink your wine. Um, alcohol is not advised if you're on a keto diet. Mm -hmm in general. So that's a general rule that you have to restrict uh, carbohydrate intake. Alcohol is a sugar, mm -hmm. so you should not consume alcohol while you're on a keto diet, but the, the keto rules are a little more lenient. Okay. So okay. Uh, you can, if the wine is under 7% sugar or 13.5% alcohol. Okay. Okay. I remember that. All right. Christian, I'm gonna do better with my with my glass, and, uh, okay? I'm, I'm uh, learning to hold good. it better. And I think we're ready. <laughs> I'm already eyeing our last wine. Mm -hmm. Oh, this wine smells so good. Now, I told her, Miss Sylvia, that I love dry red wine, but she is a person that will push your palate and make you see another perspective of wine. And that's what she's gonna do with me today. So I'm excited to see what surprise she has um, because I'm just a red wine lover. <laughs> so I'm excited. Um, so first we're going to talk about the color. Okay. Okay. Um, it is pink. Mm -hmm. It's a rosé wine. Okay. Um, a lot of people think rosé means sweet. Yeah. Rosé yeah. actually just means that it's not red, not white. It's in between. Mm -hmm. In between. It is the the example of a red hoodie in a white load laundry. Okay. When you put uh, there's white laundry mm -hmm. and and then by accident there's a red hoodie and everything and it turns. Yeah, it turns. That's true. That's true. So that just indicates that it's a rosé wine. That just indicates the color. Rosé wines can be from bone dry to very sweet. Mm. It's up to the winemaker how sweet they leave the wine to be. Okay. Usually, sweet wines have less alcohol, because obviously the sugar didn't turn into alcohol. Yeah. Dry wines have uh, high alcohol, because all the sugar turned into alcohol. So there's no okay. residual sugar. We call it residual sugar. Okay. And then I have a question. So this is the skin color of the wine. This is the skin color, right? Or am I wrong? Okay, teach there's me. Two, there's two things. <laughs> For grape, for grape wines or grapes that we use for wine making, there's two colors: the black grapes and the white grapes. Okay. The black grapes can be blue and black. The white grapes are usually green or blush, pink, yellow. Mm -hmm. Every grape juice is white. Even the oh, black grape the juice black is okay. white. Now, how we make red wine? We put the skin in it. And the color comes out of the skin and makes it red wine. But every grape juice is white. 
Oh. And if you're going to make white wine, yep. we use green grapes or we use black grapes, but be very careful not to break the skin too much mm -hmm. or we don't put the skin in it. Okay. But still, there's a little color leaches out, so it's always pink, light pink. So white wine made from black grapes are always very light pink. Think of white Zinfandel. Right, that's true. It's light pink. Zinfandel is one of the blackest grapes. Oh, wouldn't know that. <laughs> Zinfandel wine is red, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So how do they make wine Zinfandel? Or if you go to France, you can buy a white Merlot. Mm -hmm. Merlot is black. Mm -hmm. They're very careful how they process the grapes so mm -hmm. the color doesn't get in it. Okay. Now, how do you make rosé color wine? How do you make pink wine? Mm -hmm. There's several ways. One is you're careful with the black grape and you put a little skin in it or you put all the skin but remove it quickly. You don't leave it in for weeks, you leave it for a couple couple hours maybe. Or the, another way to make rosé wine is if you make uh, red wine and you're making white wine and you blend the two, mm -hmm. right? Obviously white paint, red paint makes pink paint, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So that's called then the red grape juice with the skin and the white grape juice is blended, that's called a cuvee. Mm -hmm. You can see sometimes on the bottle it says cuvee, C-U-V-E-E, -E, uh -huh. cuvee. That means red grape juice with the skin and white grape juice was fermented together. Okay. And it's just the ratio, you put a lot more white than red. Okay. Now this wine is a Moscato, which is always white. Okay, Moscato and is always white. Everybody and <laughs> Zinfandel blend. Mm -hmm. So Zinfandel is red, mm -hmm. Moscato is white. 87% Moscato, 13% Zinfandel makes this dark pink. Okay. So it's 87, 13. This is a an award-winning wine. Oh. Okay. It currently has. What's the name of this? One? It's called Pink. Pink. Okay. Pink. Yeah, I wasn't very creative, <laughs> creative with that, with that one. one. <laughs> Uh, so Pink has seven awards, a few from the Houston Rodeo Wine Competition, a few from a Lone Star International Wine Competition, oh. and we have a couple from um, other U.S. Uh, wine ratings. Mm -hmm. And I think Christian can give me the bottle so I can show you the little blend we, we have. Oh, look! How cute! We have four blinks on the bottle right now. Uh, these big ones are the Rodeo. Oh, wow. This is the newest one. We, I just got this in the mail last week. Really? Mm -hmm. And then this little one is uh, from Lone Star International Wine Competition. And the rest uh, rest of the awards are in a certificate format, so we can't stick it on the bottle. Right. So, yeah, this is, this is pink. Um, we're very proud of this wine. This wine was an accident. An accident? Yes. Oh. Uh, Bob, the winemaker, was making um, Moscato and in, uh, in the filtration process he filtered Moscato and then he had to filter Zinfandel mm -hmm. and he used Zinfandel to push the Moscato out of the uh, lines, out of the tiny pipes and he caught the wine that was coming out of it and that was pink mm -hmm. and he just left it at the end of the bar, finished what he was doing, went home and then I came in and I said, hmm, what is that? And I tasted it and I called him immediately and I said, what is it? You tell me what it is. He didn't even know what I was talking about. He already forgot. Mm -hmm. And I said, whatever you left there, that rosé wine, I want it. Oh. I don't use the word want. I always ask, I mm -hmm. would like you something. Want this one. And I told him that no matter, I don't care how he made it, I wanted it. He tweaked the, the ratio. It was it was different um, to allow the fruitiness of the Moscato to Moscato to come through. We wanted a, we wanted this wine to appeal to both sweet wine drinkers and dry wine drinkers. Oh, okay. Is it always like the rosé wine? Or was like an in between? Can no, I, I remember. It's up to the winemaker if he wants to make it dry or sweet. Okay. It's rosé, it means just color. Okay, that's right. it. I'm learning, guys. I'm learning just, together. Just color. <laughs> Let's put this on the side. Okay. Um, so, he, so we wanted it to appeal to most of our guests. 
Um, and I think it happened. Okay. This is the wine that is three and a half percent sugar. So okay. it is a little sweet. Mm -hmm. Three and a half percent sugar puts it in the off dry category. You know how wines go from dry, off dry, semi sweet, sweet? Mm -hmm. That category is based on the sugar content. Okay. A dry wine has, a, a bone dry has no sugar. A dry wine can have 1% sugar. Off dry can go up to about 4% sugar. Mm -hmm. And then so on and so forth. A sweet, a dessert wine can be 16, 18, 20% sugar. Mm -hmm. okay. Or a commercial Moscato can be 18% sugar. Ooh, okay. Those are the sweet ones. Mm -hmm. Now this is off dry, but our taste buds will pick up that 3.5% sugar. Okay. So it will taste a little bit sweet. Now it's a Moscato blend. Definitely smell it. Honeysuckle, jasmine, and gardenia on the nose. It's, it's perfuming. Perfuming? I want to bear it. Oh. I love honeysuckle. I love honeysuckle. I actually have honeysuckle candle at home. Mm, I can smell a tiny bit of earthy of the Zinfandel. Mm. And then we can taste it. The first sip is going to be different. Sweet. I can taste it. So the first, the previous two wines were dry. So yep. now your taste buds are super sensitive to sugar. The third sip onwards is where the, you're actually tasting the sweetness. Your taste buds are now in shock. Mm. You will taste it sweeter than it is. Oh, really? Oh, this is yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Okay. I mean, lemon and banana. Mm -hmm. you, if you eat lemon, if you bite into lemon first, then your banana is going to seem super sweet. Yeah. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Sweeter than it is. Yeah. Your taste buds are biased. Your taste buds are biased now. So that's why our tasting size, pour size, is two ounces, because you need to have this much wine so your taste buds are used to it, so it's actually tasting how it's supposed to taste. Um, one ounce pours are not enough to taste it. It gives you three sips. The taste buds are still in the frenzy. Mm -hmm. uh, two ounces is actually what the recommendation. Actually, the recommendation is 1.75 ounces okay. for a tasting. So I promise the sweetness level is going to go down. Mm -hmm. And it, when I swish in my mouth, I can feel it's heavier. And that the, the sugar, because there is sugar and sugar is heavy, mm -hmm. I can feel the weight of the wine in my mouth that it's heavier because there is sugar in it. Mm -hmm. it, the, it, start, it tastes it's different at time. Yeah. It is. So it's not that sweet. Three strikes. And then you tasting how it's supposed to taste. Yeah. A total different. Yeah. Wine tasting is so you don't hate it, right? No, I don't I actually don't. I don't. Now if you if you're a donor a dinner and you have friends over. Um, there is some cold appetizers. You serve them. You serve a, a Sauvignon Blanc or a Pinot Grigio, mm -hmm. and then the grill is ready, and you grill some steaks, and then you serve a nice red, dry, and then there comes the dessert at the end. Mm -hmm. I am always in trouble because most red wines do not go with dessert. It's very rare that you find a, red, a dry red yeah. that goes with a dessert. That red wine, Big Daddy. Oh, chocolate covered almonds. I was just going to ask you about chocolate. I heard the red the wine is really good with chocolate. Not all of them. Not all of them. Not all of them. Yeah. Uh, Big Daddy and the, the plain HEB chocolate covered almonds is goosebumpy good. I'm going to try that. Okay. I'm going to have to get my bottle before I leave. <laughs> That's going to be good. So if you have guests that would like a sweeter wine, and you have guests that don't like sweeter sweet wine, this is actually perfect because it's not overwhelming, it's not syrupy, it's not It's not going to stick your lips together, yeah. it's not chalky, choky, mm -hmm. it is off dry, 
a little bit of sugar and that little bit of sugar is enough to satisfy your sugar craving mm, okay. so you don't actually have to eat a whole slice of something mm -hmm. right sometimes after dinner you just want to have a bite of something or yeah. two bites of something True. I have a glass of this wine and there is your sugar and then you can still go back to the red wine to continue drinking the red if you like mm -hmm. So it's okay. Oh, it's, it. it's okay to switch between different wines. We are not snobs about wine. <laughs> wine needs to be enjoyed. Very yes, there, yes, there is rules. <laughs> yes, there is rules. We don't go if we if we're done with whites, we go reds. We don't go back and forth, especially not when we do tasting. There is a, there's a logic why we tasted these three wines in this order today. So when we're doing a tasting, the order is very important. Mm -hmm. But when when we are enjoying the wine, the taste, and you say, oh, hey, that was really nice, I want to go back. There's no law. Right. There's, okay. there's, we're not snobs about we're it, We're not people. snobs. <laughs> wine is part of, part of life. It's, you know. I agree. Even the Pope said, right, wine is a necessity. Mm -hmm. In, in, I grew up in Europe. People drink wine for lunch, go back to work. It's not, the wine is not demonized. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, but again, the purpose of the, the drinking. The purpose of the wine, that's it. The purpose of it. If you have a glass of wine for lunch, that's to aid digestion. Yeah. Not to get drunk. Exactly. So the purpose of the drinking is, that's what, that's what needs to lead. Every time you open a bottle of wine, why, why are you opening it? Respect that bottle of wine by giving it a purpose. Oh, I love that. I love that. Give your bottle of wine a purpose, not just to get intoxicated, but to give it a purpose. Thank you. That was really good. A lot of what you were saying, I'm having to quote that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that last one, that was really good. Give your bottle of wine an actual purpose. And the purpose that we do for wine therapy is to truly have discussions. You know, it could be, like you said, it can be mom, me, my sister, or it can be my friends who just want to talk about, well, how was your day today? What happened? Or, um, you know, what do you think about this that happened in the world? This and this. So we give our bottle of wine a purpose to where it's not used um, in vain or it's not used incorrectly, but it's used in the purpose of just what I call congregating. That's what I call mm -hmm. it. Come together, fellowship, and that's why I use wine. I agree. So I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. And before I go, I wanted to know what was your favorite wine and why? Um, that's a hard question. I bet it is. Because I taste a lot of wine and I take them for what they are, you know? Um, I don't, this is not my favorite wine mm -hmm. because it's sweet. I'm not sweet. I don't, I'm very similar to you, I mm -hmm. prefer dry over sweet. However, this has a place too. Now if I had to choose one, I would choose um, the baby cousin of Cabernet Sauvignon. It's called Cab Franc, Cabernet Franc. Oh, Cabernet Franc, okay. And that's the national grape of Hungary. Also the national, the state grape of the state of New York. It's a, it, uh, Cab Franc likes colder weather. The wine is higher in acid and it's fruity. It's similar to the first wine we tasted today. Okay. I like high acid. I don't like when the wine makes my mouth feel dry on the inside. Mm -hmm. But I love fruits and I love depth. Mm -hmm. I love when I can taste the oak, the smoke, the barbecue, the, oh. the whatever mushrooms. I love. Um, Barnyard. I love when you can smell the wine from a distance. Mm -hmm. I love. I love all that. Okay. But I also love a light body Pinot Noir. It really. It's, 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 uh, you know, it's what, hard. That's, that's one of my favorites. That's one of my favorites. Hard. Yes. yes. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This was awesome. Actually, I think me and my viewers, we actually learned a lot today. A whole yeah, lot, man. and I just really um, pray that your business continues to prosper, and that we actually bring some of the viewers out to come to your uh, establishment and actually enjoy a bottle of wine yeah. with a purpose. We're not just drinking, but we're drinking with a purpose. And I have enjoyed you. You have so much hospitality. And this does feel like a family-oriented place. This is your home, and I have felt very welcome. And I just want to thank you for allowing me to be here, and Christian for teaching me how to hold a... <laughs> Thank you, Christian. Tell me how to hold a glass of wine, but it has been amazing. 
And how can we, um, the viewers, find you? We are in Midtown, just a few blocks from downtown, 2600 Travis. Uh, we are on Google Map. Uh, we have our website, sablegatewinery.com. We have Instagram, Facebook, Sable Gate Winery. Um, you can call. You always get me. It rings okay. on my cell phone. Oh, cool. Um, I love to be in touch with my guests. I, I, wanna, I want that connection. Thank you. So, yeah, we are everywhere. All right, guys. So, we, you heard it here with Miss Sylvia. I have enjoyed her at Sable Gates Winery. And we're going to do some more um, content here. We're going to take pictures. And she's going to show me some more things off camera, maybe on. So, I hope y'all enjoyed it. And we will see you all next time. Thank you. Ha <laughs> ha